New United Nations figures out Sunday show that January was one of the deadliest months in Iraq for years. At least 1,375 people, including 790 civilians, died in January. The number includes 585 members of the Iraqi army, which is struggling to rebuild itself. The left-wing Syriza party in Greece that swept into power in last week's elections continues to overturn the austerity policies that worsened economic and social problems in the country. On Sunday, it announced an increase in the minimum wage. The move comes as newly elected Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras began a European tour on Sunday, seeking backing to renegotiate the country's $284 billion bailout. Greece's leader will visit Paris before heading to Rome and London. Nearly all of the money that Greece received in rescue funds went to bail out European bankers. Thirteen Ukrainian soldiers and at least seven civilians have been killed in fighting in the past 24 hours. The casualties come after Ukrainian authorities and rebel representatives failed to reach any agreement on Saturday's peace talks, which broke down after four hours. Islamic State militants released video footage Sunday claiming to show the execution of Japanese journalist Kenji Goto. Islamic State group, which controls large parts of Syria and Iraq, released the video showing a hooded man standing over Goto, who was kidnapped in October, with a knife to his throat. It is the second ISIS murder of a Japanese hostage this year. ISIS had demanded $200 million for the release of two Japanese captives, but recently changed its demand to a prisoner swap. Relatives of the 43 missing students from IOT Napa have arrived in Geneva, where they will address the United Nations. The relatives are demanding the UN puts pressure on Mexico to continue its investigation. Mexican authorities have been trying to close the investigation, claiming they are certain the students are now dead. Colombian peace talks are set to resume Monday. The new round of talks will be focused on reparations for the victims of the 50-year conflict. Separately, the Colombian government has announced the detention of former spy agency chief under previous president Alvaro Uribe. The agency was allegedly infiltrated by paramilitary groups and spied on key opposition and human rights activists. Chilean President Michelle Bachelet has sent a bill to Congress which would decriminalize abortion in cases concluding where the mother's life is threatened. The president said it's time to discuss the issue and make a decision. Such therapeutic abortions were banned by former right-wing dictator Augusto Pinochet in 1989. The Inter-American Human Rights Commission will begin this Monday, February the 2nd, with the first case being against the state of Honduras for actions that took place during the coup d'etat of 2009. In 2009, as the in 2009, there was a coup d'etat in Honduras which we denounced because it was illegal and contradicted the constitution of the republic. As a consequence, the principal members of our association, Guillermo Lopez Lona, Tirsa Flores, Luis Chavez, and Ramon Barrios, that were very critical and opposed the coup, were dismissed in 2010. On trial will be the state of Honduras for abuses of power and the violation of the rights of the judges after they were in disagreement with the actions of the coup. For Honduras, it is of vital relevance because this is the first trial that will be heard by the Inter-American Human Rights Commission related to the military coup d'etat of 2009. It also has to do with the four judges that tested the system, brought actions for restitution of the constitutional president who was overthrown by the coup, but the response of the justice system was firing them. That shows clearly the involvement of the judiciary in the military coup in execution and justification. If the state of Honduras is found guilty, it will be the first victory in a series of claims against the abuses connected with the coup d'etat that occurred over five years ago. Gerardo Torres, Telesur, Central America. The president of the Venezuelan National Assembly will take legal action against false claims published in international media outlets. The publications claim Diostado Cabello, head of the National Assembly, operates a drug cartel, based on one person's account. The legal action could include Spanish newspaper ABC and Miami's Nuevo Herald Daily, which published the original story.
American football fans are getting ready for Sunday night's Super Bowl. The season's grand finale will feature the New England Patriots against the Seattle Seahawks. The Super Bowl is the most viewed televised event in the United States, with last year's event drawing over 110 million viewers. The Ecuadorian government will be airing advertisement to promote tourism in the country, becoming the first Latin American country to do so. Facts that have marked the course of history. Productions designed in the English language and made for the English-speaking world. This is Documentary. Watch it on telesur.net slash English. Tell us, sir, wherever the news, you'll be there.